Dave, thanks very much. And here in Lawrence, Jayhawks off to the early lead. And a nice move there by Josh Selby, who has just checked into the game. And it's been a tough year for the freshman who came in as one of the top five players in the country. Missed seven games due to NCAA amateurism issues, injuries. But he has started to play well, John, before he missed some games with the, uh, with the ankle injury. Yeah, played last Monday against Kansas State, but played only 11 minutes. Nice move there by Knutson putting it on the deck. Boy, we've seen the, the growth and maturation of Levi Knutson over four years. You mentioned how good an outside shooter he is. He's got a couple baskets heading to the rim today as well. Taylor with a three. Yeah, and there's your problem right now is your Tad Boyle because they're willing to let Tyshawn Taylor shoot that three and have his man help in the lane, but if he starts making shots, then it changes your defensive strategy. Kansas three of four from beyond the arc. And Dufal able to answer, that's a two. Well, that's a guy that uh, was really a high school guard in North Dakota. Grew late, that's only his fifth three of the season. And Marty Morris knocks one down. Kansas four out of five from three so far in this game and right now Joe DeRosa and Darren George having a chat we wouldn't uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they go and see if that last default basket they want to make sure it was a three John but this is the problem you have with Kansas a team that shoots over 50 percent from the field they shoot it well from behind the arc at 39. So when you're undersized like Colorado, you have to pick your poison. Uh, Kansas as a team leading the nation in field goal percentage at about 52%. That was not the issue, though, really against Kansas State. Bill Self really questioned the defensive effort of his team. In fact, the Wildcats shot over 56% in that game. There's the feet. That looks like he could be on the line right there. From the angle we've got. Now they ruled that a two. Do they want to take a look at the Markeith Morris three at the other end? Now this is the three that they want to look at. They want to look at the default. There's a, an angle right here. Looks like his foot is on the line. So they call it a two, and the Jayhawks with a 22-11 lead. John Chomby, Fran Fraschilla here at Allen Fieldhouse. Number one, Kansas. Last Monday, punched in the nose by their interstate rival, Kansas State. Colorado, meanwhile, having a very solid season as they get the foul underneath, and it'll go the other way. Let's take a look at our starting lineups for today's game brought to you by Michelin. And here's the way Tad Boyle started the game. Relford, Burks, Higgins, and Knutson, the four guards, Austin Dufault up front. Marcus Morris, pull up wouldn't go. Good rebound by Burks, who pushes the pace. And it's sharp on the baseline. And it's a turnover. Kansas basketball when we come back. Frustrating start for Colorado and Ted Boyle. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Five Hour Energy, the no wait, no hassle way to a great morning, and in part by Infinity, luxury cars that deliver inspired performance. Welcome back to college basketball presented by Five Hour Energy here at Allen Fieldhouse, and the Jayhawks off to a good start, leading 22-11. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us. John Chomby alongside Fran Fraschilla. All right, so punched in the nose on Monday in Manhattan. How do the Jayhawks look to you so far? They've been solid. Uh, Colorado's got seven turnovers, many of them unforced, but uh, 
focus this week in practice was the point of emphasis, and so far, ball movement with Kansas, offense is never the issue. For Kansas and Bill Self right now, he's not happy with the way they're defended lately. Solid so far. Yeah, they struggled against the Wildcats defensively. Our Michelin starting lineups, Colorado went with a four-guard attack. Relford, Burks, Higgins, Knudsen, and then Dufault up front. Taylor, Morningstar, Reed, and then the Morris twins, Markeith and Marcus, the starters in this one. Jayhawks basketball. Kansas been hot from three early. Elijah Johnson. And the rebound pulled down by the freshman Shannon Sharp. Colorado is a motion offense team. They'll mix some sets in. But the key is to get Alec Burks going. And he, John, in this offense, oftentimes has, oftentimes has to take tough shots, end of clock shots. Doesn't help his shooting percentage. Ted Boyle has brought in Ben Mills, seven footer from Wisconsin, as he feeds Corey Higgins. Six on the shot clock. Higgins, shot clock. And Kansas the other way. It's Elijah Johnson. Oh, that's a nice pass. Great look, Selby finding Marcus Morris. Probably the one thing Josh Selby does that helps this team. We know he can score. He can break you down off the dribble and force the defense to guard him with more than one man. Biggest lead of the game so far, Kansas by 11. Selby, prior to the Kansas State game, missed three games with a stress reaction in his right ankle as Relford is fouled, and he'll go to the line to shoot two. Well, this is what we talked about, John. This young man's an explosive scorer, but watch his ability to get to the lane off the dribble, forces help, and that allows an easy dump down to Marcus Morris. Last foul of Mario Little, his first team foul number four. Amazing that Tad Boyle, who we mentioned captain his senior year here at Kansas, 1985, had only been back in this building one time in the last 26 years. That the you know he said I was coaching, always traveling around. He remembers coming back for an Iowa State game. But uh, a lot of memories for the Larry Brown, senior captain, when Danny Manning was a freshman back in 1985. Mark Turgeon was on that team. Reed off the bounce. And a rebound by Marcus Moore. Short on that shot, Marquis puts it back in. If you'd expect Kansas to dominate the glass against an undersized Colorado team, and that's exactly what the Twins did right there. Keep Morris up to a good start. Eight points. And they get the foul there on Elijah Johnson. Fran Marquis Morris, outstanding rebounder. Both Marquis and Marcus. Bill Self says two very good passers. Both guys rebound well. Well, that's the underrated. You mentioned the passing, John. This is a very good passing team. And one of the reasons it's a good passing team is when you have guys like Brady Morningstar, Tyrell Reed, they uh, they they force you to make passing. It's contagious. And it really allows the Morris Twins to show a different side of their game than just the rebounding and scoring. Ralford being harassed, tries to split the defense, and they get the tie-up. Possession arrow, and it belongs to Colorado. Ralford frustrated, Higgins walking with him, but Colorado's maintaining possession. Levi Knudsen was trying to get everybody's attention. Hey, guys, still our ball. Well, take a look. It's a little pick and roll action right here. Now, he's already gotten through the screen, but it's a double team. And then Marcus Relford, he's a senior. He's got to maintain his composure. You're not going to play great basketball on every possession, but you got to play the next play. Ten on the shot clock. Relford. Higgins into the lane. And they get the bump. 
And that one will be charged to Markeith Morris. Team foul number six on Kansas. Tell you what, we talked about the, the twins and how, all the things they do well. That time, Marcus Morris really, he mo really moved his feet well in guarding Relford, who is really a perimeter player. He's a small forward. Feed underneath. Knudsen was wide open, and Bill Self exploded when he saw it. Knudsen will go to the line, and he will shoot two. Well, folks, action continues tonight on ESPN, 6 Eastern, as Washington will take on number 13, Arizona. Busy day of basketball in the ESPN family of networks. And our Pac-10 battle first at 6 Eastern, Isaiah Thomas and the Huskies trying to pick up a win, and then Illinois and Michigan State at 9 Eastern. You know the crazy thing? is uh, you got to start talking about Derek Williams in that National Player of the Year talk. You know, it was Kemba Walker, Jimmy Fredette for a while. Sollinger, certainly Nolan Smith's been outstanding. But out on the left coast, I think Derek Williams needs to start getting some praise for the great job he's done. Remember, he carved up the Morris Twins in an early season game, although Kansas came back and won late. Morning star knocks down another three. That's his third. And a Brady morning star to me. You know, forget glue guys. You know, that's a term that's overused. He is really, he's so important to this team, primarily because of his ball moving. But if you leave him open, he can knock down shots. Burks will launch and hit Alec Burks. Now you notice again, Brady Morningstar in his face, hand up. Alec Burks, that's not his strength in terms of all the things he does well. Flipped out of bounds and it'll stay with Kansas. But if he makes that shot, John, it's going to really enhance his reputation with uh, the plethora of NBA scouts that have been through Boulder this season. In fact, we got a number of them here today to watch Alec Burks and the Twins. What you love about Alec Burks is he's a late bloomer, 6'2", going into his senior year. Now he's 6'6". Six, six. Look at that ball movement. Selby into the paint. Oh, and a lot for Marquis Morris. I lost count, but four or five players all touched the ball in that possession. It started with the baseline drive by Morningstar. Passing is contagious. Good passing is, by the way, and bad can be also. Kansas now 10 assists on 29 total points. One of the top assist teams in the country, the Jayhawks are. Knudsen working on Reed, and now Robertson. Morning star. He's got 11, and the Jayhawks are up by 14. Well, you mentioned it, John. Ball movement, assist, high field goal percentage. Why not when you got talent and you got unselfishness? Back here in Lawrence, John Chomby, Fran Priscilla with you. And Marquise Morris and the Jayhawks. Up to a 14-point lead. All right, here's one for you. Marquise Morris, this is hard to imagine. In their loss against Kansas State, no rebounds. Yeah, that says, that says it all right there. Kansas State was sensational. Frank Martin had his team ready. I thought early in that game, Samuels and Kelly and Enriquez Roberts got baskets in the lane. And they basically punked the Morris twins. And that doesn't happen too often. Another rebound for Marquise. That one taken away. Selby went down hard. Burks with Morningstar in his hip. A little fade away is short. Yep, that's a tough shot right there. He's relegated at times, John, to having to take tough shots. Good defense by Morningstar. He could have got a better shot if he'd been a little more patient, a little more ball movement. Colorado active on the defensive end. 
Higgins spots an opening, goes right to the glass. You know, it's interesting with all the talk about Alec Burks, and he deserves all the praise because he's likely to be an NBA pick this year or next. Corey Higgins, fifth all-time scorer at Colorado. Four-year starter, rock solid. In a way, in the shadows right now of Alec Burks. Read off the window and good. Corey Higgins has started every game in his career but one. And last year was their leading scorer. So, yeah, he's had to give some ground to the to the now sophomore. The only game he didn't start is because he and he and uh, Burks were sat down for a game against Alcorn State. Nice move right there because Tad Boyle wanted to send a message to the team. And had he started that game, he would have far surpassed the streak that Jay Humphreys, who was a great player in the early 80s, had. But uh, Tad Boyle said, I had to do it for the team, and both players responded. Morning star couldn't hit and flying in. He picks up the offensive rebound and gets it to Reed. Good flow. That's what Kansas has when they're rolling. They've got guys that can score and make plays, but when the ball moves, they become extra difficult to guard. Jayhawks, six of eight from behind the three point line. Knutson can't answer. Great offensive rebound by Robertson. Kansas at home, a number one team looking to bounce back, and so far they have up by 15. Munin, Doug Gottlieb in studio. Jacobin Brown's got 12 points. Texas undefeated in the Big 12. Pretty tough game against Nebraska, but so far the Longhorns taking care of business. Seven-point lead at the half, Doug. Yeah, and Texas just continues to kind of find their way through this league. So, so far today, the story is Villanova surviving and St. John's another big home win against the top 10 ranked. Pittsburgh team. goes down at Madison Square Garden. More uh, updates on the way here on ESPN. And Dwight Hardy with that big shot. Texas and Nebraska are going head to head. Two excellent defensive teams. Right? Well, they really are. The hard part, if you're going to beat Texas, you got to find a way to solve that tremendous defense. We've talked about it many times, John. They not only are terrific individually, I thought the guys in game day this morning talked about how Gary Johnson may be the most underrated defensive player in the country. Individually, they're great, but as a team, they're even better. You take five fingers, you make a fist, and that's Texas defense right now. Hey, by the way, Steve Lavin, St. John's, tremendous job that Steve has done. And I'll tell you something there. I really was impressed with with Steve as he's given Norm Roberts, former head coach at St. John's, former assistant to Bill Self, a lot of credit for putting that team together. Of course, Steve and his staff have done a great coaching job. They play really hard, John. They're going to be fun to watch in the NCAA tournament. Senior-laden team. I've been to the Garden to check them out. And yep. I tell you, the fans are embracing that St. John's group. Elijah Johnson. And morning start again. You know, it's interesting. When he played up at New Hampton Prep for Jamie Arsenault, his father, Roger, who was a terrific player here at Kansas, went to see them, and he got taken out of the game and screamed at by the coach. And later, Roger said, what'd you tell him? He said, he's got to stop passing up shots. He's too unselfish. And he's been a very unselfish player at Kansas, but obviously, you see, Roger played on that Final Four team back in 74 for Ted Owens, and the Morningstar family has a lot of history here. And Roger pointed out yesterday to me that Brady's the first morning star to make all academic Big 12. Uh, they just keep knocking him down. And Tad Boyle is upset with his team. 
Well, speaking of Brady Morningstar, a guy that can do a little bit of everything. I know you love him. Well, here's a guy that wasn't sure he could play at Kansas. Prep school for a year, redshirted a year. Take a look at his passing, John. We've highlighted how good a shooter he is. Well, what really makes this offense go for Kansas is his ability to deliver to Rock. He keeps things simple. Watch this, perfect post feed. Look at the target hand. It's Morris right on the hand, and that leads to what? An open three, knocks it down. When you have the kind of scoring that Kansas has, you need a ball mover, and that's what Brady Morningstar is. He is a ball mover. This is phenomenal right here. He already knows where the ball is going to Thomas Robinson. Doesn't even have to take a dribble. Yeah, Brady Morningstar as well, a guy that defends pretty well, and Bill Self likes to use the phrase, don't let the ball stick and maybe nobody embodies that better as far as someone to carry out that mission than Brady Morris. Well, that's exactly right. We call them ball stoppers or ball movers. You know, you got guys that play with Velcro on their hands. They catch it, they hold it for a few seconds, and by that time, the defense is able to readjust their team defense. But when you move the ball well, side to side, it really puts pressure on that defense. Colorado just out of sorts on both ends of the court, down by 19. Relford trying to feed the cutting Robertson. Good hands by Wibby. On the baseline, morning start again. That's a two, and he's got 16. Mark Turgeon is watching this ball game now in Stillwater, and he didn't think at the time before Brady went to prep school he'd be quite good enough for Wichita State, and he was probably right, because this guy is a self-made player over six years. Two-pointer for Corey Higgins. With the backing down, uses the glass, nice move. How about Withy? Bill Self told us early in the year, if we get five, seven, ten minutes from him, defensive presence at the rim, all he does now with Thomas Robinson out is gives him, a, gives him another live body. Austin Dufault with that jumper. Yeah, Withy started slowly this year, had surgery on his foot in September. Marcus Morris. And now it's Relford the other way, doesn't have numbers. Knutson. Timeout called Kansas. Bill Self calls timeout. 154 to go here in the first half. Brady Morningstar, 16 points for the Jayhawks. Well, Judgment Week starts Monday on ESPN 7 Eastern, number 20 Syracuse going up against number 14 Villanova and then 9 Eastern Oklahoma State and number one Kansas right here at Allen Fieldhouse. Big Monday presented by Bud Light, part of Judgment Week presented by Battle Los Angeles on ESPN. You know, this is a program with so much history, so much tradition, and all-star break time, and so a lot of the former Jayhawks around, including Cole Aldrich, Xavier Henry. Yep. Well, these guys are back home. Mario Chalmers of the Miami Heat. Of course, Danny Manning, a guy that played with Tad Boyle and Mark Turgeon, and you know, I want to finish that story because Roger Morningstar was telling us that he was really hoping he'd be good enough to play at Wichita State, where Mark was doing a great job, and... Mark said, I'm just not sure. And of course, Mark, being a former Jayhawk, didn't want to make a mistake on a guy that was family. And Brady decided to go to prep school for a year. And, and Bill Self said, look, no matter what, we've got to walk on spot free. You can always be a Jayhawk. But I don't think anybody expected him to develop into the player he has. And it's really a great story when you've got a program like this, John, that can get McDonald's All-American. Oh, nice save by Marquis Torres. Kick up ahead, here's Relford, and he throws it down. And he is a crowned favorite, is Morningstar. Pass just a little too high for Marquis. Timeout on the court. Well, it's been Brady Morningstar's afternoon, John. 
We know how good a passer he is. You chronicle the defense, but hey, guess what? You leave the guy open, he'll hurt you. Every good team needs a Brady Morningstar, and that's a proud pop right there. Steve Bunin coming up on the UPS Halftime Report with Doug Gottlieb. St. John's topples another top 10 team at Madison Square Garden. This one on a last second finish you got to see to believe. Missouri yet to win a road game in Big 12 play. It is today the Tigers finally get a win away from home. And is it time for Texas to ascend to the number one throne? We're going to break it all down coming up at the half. John? Yes, Steve, and a tight one between DePaul and Villanova. You guys will have it all. And that one kicked out of bounds. It'll stay with Colorado. Steve Lavin keeps doing well. There may be uh, room for ex-coaches to come back to the sideline over at ESPN, John, you know? <laughs> but if that means leaving you, forget about it. Yeah, you got to stay right here with well, me, pal. I'm enjoying this. Enjoying working with you. Here's Relford now. Relford into the paint. And a rebound yanked down by Marquise Morris. Brady Morningstar handles. The 1-3-1 zone now. They use this against Kansas up in Boulder with a little bit of effectiveness. Not right now. Outside they get the foul on Corey Higgins. One of the things that happens, John, as the year goes on, you remember Kansas struggled at Michigan with that 1-3-1 zone the entire second half. Tad Boyle threw it at the Jayhawks in late January, but once you get the late February, your team has really seen most of the defenses you're going to see going into the postseason. And here's a good example. When you play 1-3-1, you can never let the ball get to the foul line, and that's where it went, and that really breaks your defense down, and you see the passing ability of the Twins. That game in January in Boulder, it was close, and the Jayhawks ended up coming away with an 82-78 win, but the Buffaloes were in it the whole way. Absolutely. Burks with 25, Corey Higgins with 19. Closing in on 20 seconds to go here in the first half. It has been all Kansas. Higgins now. Shot clock at four. Relford for three. And an offensive rebound and a put back by Alec Burks. And that is the way the first half will come to an end. But what a first half for Brady Morningstar. His career high is 21. He's got 16 through the first 20 minutes. Our score at the half, Kansas 48, Colorado 31. Now we send it to Steve Buden with the UPS Halftime Report. Welcome back to College Basketball presented by Five Hour Energy. For 20 minutes here at Allen Fieldhouse and the Jayhawks looking sharp offensively as they lead Colorado 48 to 31. Hi everybody, John Chambi alongside Fran Fraschilla. Well, the Jayhawks outstanding in the offensive end. Most points Colorado has given up in the first half this year. The hometown kid, though, Brady Morningstar, he was the story. Well, he was. And, you know, Bill Self wanted focus after that loss. Brady Morningstar has been focused today. He's only taken eight shots, but he's got 16 points, three assists, no turnovers. And uh, this is what you like about a guy. You've got guys on this roster who start who have a lot of uh, national exposure, but the local kid from Lawrence has played very well. Let's take a look at the hustle and then the extra pass of Tyrell Reed knocks down the three. And Levi Knudsen with a good first half for Colorado and see Morningstar with the four three-pointers, Marquis Morris 13 and five, and Kansas as a team went eight for 12 from the three-point line. Immediately to try to feed the post to Marcus Morris deflected out of bounds Kansas ball. You know when we talked to Bill Self yesterday John he made the point about being out tough at Kansas State and 
when he was in the locker room this week, he asked the team, he goes, who are our toughest players? And to a man, everybody said Morningstar and Reed. And the point being, it's not about toughness in terms of who's gonna, who you're going to beat up, but who's mentally tough. With the foul there on Austin Dufault. He's a young man from Kildare, North Dakota, graduated in class of 30. We were talking yesterday after the Colorado practice if he knew who the great players to ever come out of North Dakota were. And of course, Jeff Boshi, who was an outstanding player for Roy Williams here, he said, I grew up a Kansas fan because Jeff Pope Boshi was from the state of North Dakota. Of course, Phil Jackson as well grew up, went to high school there. Default takes it away. Higgins, high off the glass, wouldn't go. Mark Keith Morris, the rebound. And they get a foul underneath. That's on Marcus Morris. And that is number two on Marcus. And Bill Self is letting the officials know that telling Darren George he thought that Relford flopped. Of course, he's mentioned that with the intentional fouls, the flagrant foul, the elbow issues that the Twins have had, that uh, they've actually gotten a reputation now for that. And he's trying to protect his two players. Fight for the loose ball. Kansas comes away with it. Guess who? Morningstar. Lob. Oh, great ups. Marcus Morris. Kansas here at Allen Fieldhouse. Relford backs it out. Shot clock now at six. Burks right to the rim with the left hand and it rolls out. Oh, terrific, John. This is a guy that shoots over uh, seven free throws a game. You saw the shot clock go down, and normally if he doesn't get by his man, it becomes a contested jump shot. That time he was able to get to the rim. Taylor gets a three. Kansas with nine threes in the game. Now that's certainly important if Tyshawn Taylor is knocking down threes. Came in only shooting about 31 percent, but Thad Boyle told us he was going to let Taylor shoot threes if it meant that they could help inside. Offensive foul, Alec Burks. It'll go the other way. That's Burks first. I mentioned earlier, Alec Burks came out of uh, really out of obscurity going into his senior year. There you see his. Mom and dad. His dad played at Washington. Actually, his dad was drafted by the Seattle Sonics in the eighth round. Played in the early 80s for Marv Parchman. And they get the travel. All right, so we go over what, what makes him special. Well, he's 6'6". He grew late, so he's got positional size to be a shooting guard. He's got that ability to get to the rim we just talked about, we just saw. Excellent in transition where he's got to improve, John. The perimeter shot. And also, he's got to get stronger. He's on some people's draft boards as high as 11. I'm not so sure that, you know, unless it's a real bad draft, that that's where he'll go if he comes out. I think there's some things about his game he can obviously continue to work on. Doesn't really break people down off the dribble in terms of athleticism NBA-wise that I think he's going to need to. Marcus Morris spins to the baseline, misses the jumper, and a rebound by Knudsen. Well, let's see if they can get Burks a little more involved offensively. Dufault, tough shot. And they get Relford for the push-off. Well, right now, if you're Bill Self, you love the you love the energy defensively, particularly since in conference play, by Kansas standards, they've been mediocre defensively. In fact, they're giving up 38 percent in conference play from the three-point line. Very uncharacteristic of Bill Self's teams here at Kansas. 
Taylor pulls up. And that one knocked out of bounds by Alec Burks, Kansas ball. I think, John, when you talk about Kansas and how good they can be and whether they're number one, number two, whether they're a number one seed, the biggest thing that I worry about with Kansas is what we saw Monday night, the lack of focus and coming ready to play every game. And that has to start with the three juniors. Underneath, it's Marcus Morris getting it to go. Well, health has got to be a factor as well for Kansas right now without Thomas Robinson following surgery and meniscus tear. And then Selby's not at 100% as Burks gets that to go. I mean, Selby is somebody, and there's Robinson, but Selby's a guy, if that foot is right, and you touched on it earlier, if their offense breaks down, he can get his own shot. Well, he can. He also makes people better because he can beat his man, get into the lane and pass. And Thomas Robinson worked out yesterday, as we saw, and... I think he'll be back as early as uh, Saturday in Norman as they take on the Sooners next Saturday. Three second violation. Oh, we mentioned Thomas Robinson. They're expecting him to be out for about two weeks, and he'll give him a nice boost when he comes back. The Sunday night ESPN's year of the quarterback presents the color orange, the Condridge Holloway story. Holloway was the first African-American to ever start a quarterback in the SEC. A film by Kenny Chesney and Sean Silva Sunday at 8 Eastern on ESPN. Here at Allen Fieldhouse, Jayhawks leading this one by 20. 15-21 to go. John Chambi, Fran Fraschilla with you. Kansas appears to have gotten back up off the mat after getting punched right in the nose by Kansas State on Monday. And that's a win by the Wildcats that really gives them increased hope in terms of making uh, the NCAA tournament. A shot by Corey Higgins. And credit Jacob Pullen as well was absolutely outstanding Monday night. 38 points. Steal by Higgins, Buffalo's the other way. Spins into the lane, and Relford, and one, he'll go to the line. Well, you mentioned Big 12 overall. How about France February forecast? No, Break get, it down. Yeah, you got four teams that are sunny, obviously. Hey, Nebraska beating Texas right now. They'd move to partly sunny if uh, they win that game. and. Of course, uh, a lot of basketball would be played. Colorado is mostly cloudy. Nebraska, as I mentioned, could move up. And uh, that's the weather in the uh, Big 12 country. Now, here's a look at the forecast in your area, John Chow. <laughs> now, here's what's happening in your neck of the woods. So, okay, so if you're, if you're sunny or mostly sunny, that's NCAA tournament, right? Exactly, exactly. And I think this league right now is pushing towards five, probably six bids, depending on how teams like Baylor finish up but Nebraska is in the hunt if they can hold on and, and win that game against Texas who had not trailed in a game John in six games hanging it almost hitting right there is Marquise Morris and they get the foul on Robertson and a tough return to Allen Fieldhouse for Tad Boyle over Jayhawk guard and this is a guy that played at really central high school in uh, Really, Colorado, up where Northern University of Northern Colorado is. Ironically, that's where he went back as a head coach after spending as a time and time as an assistant at Oregon for Jerry Green and Jacksonville State and Wichita State with former teammate Mark Turgeon. Did a great job at Northern Colorado and won 25 games a year ago in a natural fit in Boulder. What's your take on how Colorado will fare in the Pac-10? Well, you know, right now it's let's face it, it's an easier league to compete in, and you know, they'll be they've already signed three kids from Los Angeles, so the fact that they're going to be on the West Coast quite often is paying off in recruiting. Higgins, that's a two. Yeah, Corey Higgins, the son of former NBA player and now executive in the NBA, Rod Higgins. What a solid career he's had for the. Colorado Buffaloes. They just finish up on them moving to the Pac-10. I think it just kind of underlines how good this conference is. This is a really good conference, the Big 12. Well, what's going to happen, it's, it's what's exciting about the Big 12 now with the loss of Nebraska to the Big 10, Colorado to the Pac-10, is you're going to have round-robin plays. So 
teams like Texas and Kansas are not going to meet once anymore. They'll meet home and away every year, and that'll go for everybody in the conference. So you're going to see I think, more quality basketball games being played. Not to say that there haven't been great games in the past, but uh, certainly I think a lot of fans are looking forward to it. I think Nebraska will compete better in the Big Ten. Seems like more of a natural fit for them. It's a grinded out league and I think everybody came away from all that controversy this summer with conference re realignment fairly satisfied with where their place is. Oh, we get a little nickel dimer underneath. You know, right now if you're Tad Boyle you've been down 20. You cut it to 15 and you just right now if you can get it down to around 10 points with 10 minutes to go. You'd be very happy with that. The last foul on Little is Kansas with some pressure. Taylor rebound. Tyshawn Taylor hangs and can't hit. Relford pulls up. And gets that to go as a two. And Bill Self wants to talk it over. 13 14 to go here in the second half. Well, right now, Kansas falling asleep a little bit. Big lead. Buffalo's chipping away. They've got it to 13. Who knows? your studio update Texas still some work to do before the rank number one Monday like beat Nebraska on the road as Shante Jones hits the three and the last regular seating Big 12 Texas Nebraska game it's the Huskers by six with seven to go we'll keep you updated number one on the women's side Baylor in big trouble under two to go down nine to Texas Tech John and Fran it's that kind of day how about it all right Ryan so both teams in a bit of trouble right now yep. and Doc Sadler's team they play hard get after you defensively see if Texas can pull it out there on the road. I'll tell you what they've already got 52 points with seven minutes to go and that surprises me a little bit You're right Doc's team plays with great tenacity Lance Jeter now a senior solid. There's Selby. That's what he can do. Yep. He can do it for himself, John, but we've also seen his ability to drive, get a piece of the paint, and how it affects his teammates as well because he'll dish the rock. The high level player adds something to Kansas' offensive attack when it's healthy. And Higgins went up for that shot, got fouled by Elijah Johnson. So Corey Higgins will shoot two. Team foul number four on Kansas. At the line, shooting two. two. Is Corey Higgins. Corey Higgins second in scoring on the team this year. But as you mentioned, Fran, what a career it's been for him. Four-year guy. Started his career for Jeff Pizdelic, where they ran that Georgetown slash Princeton style, as you mentioned. And with all the fundamentals involved with that style of play. Now that Tad, Tad Boyle wants to get up and down and run, he's uh, played well at the Corey's game. So a 13-point game here at Allen Fieldhouse. And the crowd a bit quiet right now in Lawrence. Keith Morris. Lost the handle out of bounds. Colorado basketball. Nice job that time by Colorado. Brady Morningstar is a very good post passer, but once that ball was in the air, they rotated well from the weak side and really corralled Morris. 
Thresher from Kansas. And now they'll back off. You know, as a coach, it's hard to play with a 20-point lead. Of course, if you ask me, I'd rather have a 20-point lead and be down 20, but it's hard to maintain that intensity. Certainly the crowd feels it right now as well, John. Selby way off with that one. And now the Australian Nate Tomlinson handling it gives off to Burks. Burks a three short. But underneath, Robertson actually had that go off the base of the backboard. So Kansas basketball, Jayhawks by 13. Looks like that pass was intended for Joe DeRosa. And a foul underneath. Marquise Morris will go to the line to shoot two. Number one, Kansas, leading by 13 at home, 10.59 to go second half. Steve Bunin in studio. We've got ourselves another top 10 team on some, in some huge trouble. Texas ready to ascend to number one. Not if you lose to Nebraska. Ashanti Jones for three. Look at the Cornhuskers at home, playing like they mean it, up 11 with three and change left. Again, you can see that game on ESPN3.com, as well as Missouri looking for its first road conference win of the season. Guys? And how about that? So Texas trailing Nebraska with under four to go. And Missouri, Mike Anderson's team, needs a road win. They just put the score up. With Nebraska leading Texas by 11, put it up on the scoreboard here at Allen Fieldhouse, and the fans let out a big cheer. Well, and, the, and the reason it's big, John, take a look at this. You know, not a lot of people have been talking about Nebraska's NCAA champions, but a win over Texas today puts them at 6 and 6, 18 and 8 overall, heading down the home stretch with a reasonably favorable last four games. Between Nebraska and Colorado, one of the two has a shot. I don't know whether I'd say it necessarily a good shot, but a shot to get in. Yeah, and, and I think what Nebraska has is the continuity of having Doc Sadler's defensive system in place. These, these guys are tremendous defensively. Good hands by the Jayhawks. Fight for the loose ball. Kansas comes up with it. And Selby travels. You know, I'm looking at Nebraska's schedule, and they got K-State and Missouri at home, and they're at Iowa State and at Colorado. So, you know, a split. You know, you win the two home games against quality teams, split on the road, three and one. That's pretty good, nine and seven. It is funny in that spot, and I'm just guessing here, but that, that time where you're looking for wins, I guess as Doc Sadler's saying on the road, Boulder's a chance where we could get a win. And Tad Boyle's looking at Nebraska and saying there's a chance at home where we can get a win. You're exactly right. On the baseline, nice shot there by Corey Higgins. Now if you're a team on the bubble in the last couple weeks of the season, you really actually relish the opportunity to win games that are meaningful to the basketball committee, whether a team's ranked or a tough place to play on the road. Uh, Keith Morris rebounds his brother's miss, puts it in, and he'll go to the line. Well, action continues tonight on ESPN, the home court of college hoops number 13, Arizona, playing host to Washington, 6 Eastern, and then at 9 o'clock Eastern, Saturday primetime, presented by DirecTV, Illinois, and Michigan State. What a game for Marquise Morris. 19 and 8 now. Beg your pardon, 19 and 9 now for Marquise. Keeps a guy that takes less shots than his brother. Better rebounder statistically, but you know it's amazing that games are so similar. Well, Keith gets the reputation of maybe being a little more blue collar, but that's mainly because he didn't get as many touches as he was. It's from Philadelphia. Big recruits. Relford, ball fake, and then the three. That's on the rim for a moment. 
Colorado one for 12 from the three-point line. That's a big part of the story today. Marcus underneath and one. Andre Robertson getting a lesson right now. The young man's been a solid contributor all season long, but he's very undersized when it comes to guarding the two Morris twins. Take a look now. He just gets bullied inside. There's really nothing for him to do except hold his ground, and holding your ground is not going to work when it comes to trying to stop Marcus Morris. Yeah, just a freshman. He's at listed at 67195 so he's he's giving up about 40 or 50 pounds to each of the Morris twins Smart keep the rebound put back wouldn't go yeah, Colorado basketball or keep Morris by the way now 10 double doubles this season, most in the Big 12. Relford on the baseline, and he gets fouled by Marquise Morris. Number three on Marquise. Correction, second personal foul. I beg your pardon, it is number two. Kind of, Marquee. kind of interesting, John Tatchell coming back home where he played at Kansas. Graduated the same year Bill Self did from Oklahoma State. They were they were five and five against each other when they played against each other. We're talking to Bill Self yesterday, he said, I like playing against Tad Boyle, and he probably liked playing against me because we were the only guys in the league that could guard each other. <laughs> because trying to keep Jay Humphreys and guys like that in front of you was nearly impossible. You think back to the old big uh, big eight days. You know, Jeff Grayer and Barry Stevens at Iowa State. Standing passing between the Morris twins. And great work by Marcus with the seal off. Well, they got a feel for each other because they played together so long. And Bill Self has always loved the high-low offense. Going back to his days at Tulsa, he's really made that offense his bread and butter. Relford reverses with the left hand. Side and Marquise Morris is fouled on the floor. Austin Dufault charged with that foul. Well, Tad Boyle and his career at Kansas. Good looking haircut he's rocking there. 82 to 85 he played. 88 games while at Kansas, 24 starts. They went to two NCAA tournaments, including 1985. Tad Boyle was the captain under Larry Brown. As I mentioned earlier in the broadcast, it was Danny Manning's freshman year. They opened the NCAA tournament out of South Bend, Indiana, where Notre Dame was in the tournament, actually played at home at that time. And I was a young coach at Ohio U, and we played Kansas in the first round. So I remember I told Tad yesterday our strat strategy in guarding Danny Manning was stay away from Boyle and hold him side. <laughs> <laughs> You see Ann, his wife, who played here at Kansas. We had a chance to visit with her and the boys this morning at Starbucks. Making a trip back here and seeing one of the greatest arenas in all of college basketball. Knudsen ball fake into the paint goes left hand and eventually Marcus Morris pulls down the board. And this Colorado team has swept Kansas State twice. Something that the Jayhawks could not do obviously. Great post feed. And the rebound ripped down by Dufault. Right 
now if you're Bill Self, you know you got this game in hand, you just want to see the same level of intensity that they started the game with, even if the crowd is not into it, John. Burks with that over the back rebound wasn't called. Fans didn't like it, and Tyshawn Taylor was a little upset about it as well. Taylor puts it on the floor, goes to the rim, and he's fouled. Nope, offensive foul. Well, Bill Self didn't like it, and he's like most of the things he's seen today, but he's not going to stop coaching. There's a lot at stake, and it's not just this game. He's got a season left. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Five Hour Energy, the no way, no hassle way to a great morning, and in part by Chrysler, imported from Detroit. Steve Bunin in studio. Look at this. Texas led by seven at the half at Nebraska, but the Longhorns shooting six for 21 in the second half. Lance Jeter to the rack, and the Cornhuskers have a five-point lead with a buck and a half to go in Lincoln. They're getting ready to dance there. Uh, they're dancing in Lubbock. How about that score? Number one, Baylor goes down. Brittany Griner and the Lady Bears, 56-45, and UConn steamrolling Notre Dame on ESPN3.com. Guys. All right, Steve, thanks very much. Our game here, Jayhawks in control as Levi Knutson buries a three. Yep, set play out of the timeout. Burks drives baseline. It's a misdirection. It's a play that uh, assistant coach Curtis Towson, Kansas, who was in charge of this scout, walked through with the team yesterday. Good execution by the Buffaloes out of that timeout. Morningstar, it's 16 first half points. Hasn't taken a shot in the second half. And bumped on the baseline there. Tyshawn Taylor is fouled. And they get Dufault with his fourth personal. Ten team fouls on Colorado. So the Jayhawks will shoot two the rest of the way. At the line shooting two, Tyshawn Taylor. Taylor, the New Jersey native, 76% free throw shooter. And this is a guy that played at St. Anthony's in Jersey City. By the way, congratulations to Coach Bob Hurley, who recently went over 1,000 points and is already in the Basketball Hall of Fame. But he played with Trayvon Woodall at Pittsburgh and Gio Fontan, who's now at USC, a quality team. Dominic Cheek at Villanova. Bob Hurley Sr., one of the all-time great High school basketball coaches in the thousand wins now. You know what, John? He's one of the all-time great basketball coaches, period. Probably one of the top five coaches I've ever been in, in around. Out of bounds, it'll be Colorado basketball. Fans didn't like the call. Speaking of top coaches, there's a guy that's done an incredible job in 18 years, taking three different teams to the Elite Eight, Tulsa, Illinois, and of course Kansas. And we saw some of those members of the 2008 National Championship team here today getting a rousing ovation. Sharon Collins and Cole Aldridge. Works the default. Default couldn't get it to fall. And now Taylor the other way. Three to three. Good work by Tyshawn Taylor. Kept it simple, didn't he? Knew where Reed was. Oh, nice move, Alec Burks. Yeah, that's what Alec Burks does. That's a combination of what he does well. Terrific in transition. Very, very good at getting to the rim. Very elusive. Taylor from the corner. Very good ball movement. The turnaround is fair play. Reed gave it right back to Taylor. There's a nice delivery. Uh, Dufault couldn't finish. And then they get the tech on Austin Dufault for hanging on the rim. Now that's a class B technical. Well, that, that shouldn't be a technical foul that causes his uh technical foul number 33 off the big ball. Let's take a look. Well, there it is hanging on the rim is of course yep. Technical and the personal, and he's gone. He is done. That is his fifth personal. And that's that. Uh, there, there is just 
no way to, to justify that one as far well, as I think he was, the rim. You know what? He missed the dunk. He just was, you know, frustrated. Frustrated. Yeah. At the line, sorry, no. All right. That's the what officials, I officials just let us know that it is not a person. Right. Class B falls under that category of, of an administrative technical foul, John. <laughs> like a, you know, a flagrant technical foul. It's or, a misdemeanor. Yeah, exactly right. All Kansas in this one. As we close in on five minutes to go here at Allen Fieldhouse. Jayhawks bouncing back from the thrashing at the hands of Kansas State on Monday night in Manhattan. Marcus Morris underneath. Oh, baby. How about that? 6'9", 235, hanging and spinning it home. Contorting. And Burks is fouled. Uh, watch this nice feed from Selby and then watch the contortion on the other side of the rim. Good hang time right there. Marcus Morris now with three personal fouls. 17 fouls on Kansas. Good opportunity, John, despite the score for Josh Selby to get a lot of work here. You mentioned the ankle injury. They weren't going to play him Monday, but at the shoot around over in Manhattan, they had him run up and down the floor and play some one on one against Nico Roberts, one of Kansas's walk ons. In fact, the son of Norm Roberts, former St. John's coach. And Josh convinced them that he was ready to go. Of course, it turned out that really nobody for Kansas was ready to go, but to get him back on the floor coming down the home stretch is very important for Bill Self. Played 11 minutes against Kansas State after missing the previous three. A very talented young player from Baltimore. Highly recruited. It's interesting, you know, when you look at the ESP, ESPN, here you see some former players. Jeff Graves on the right. Xavier Henry, you saw Sharon Collins. Paul Aldridge, of course, with the Oklahoma City Thunder. Kansas is going to be at Oklahoma on Saturday, and then Blake Griffin will take on the Thunder that night in Oklahoma City. Mario Chalmers hit the big shot. Biggest shot of Bill Self's career. All Kansas here at Allen Fieldhouse. Colorado coming in trying to pick up a win against a very tough foe as Robertson is fouled underneath. Now Judgment Week starts Monday on ESPN 7 Eastern, number 20 Syracuse and number 14 Villanova, then 9 Eastern. It's Oklahoma State taking on number one Kansas right here at Allen Fieldhouse. Big Monday presented by Bud Light, part of Judgment Week presented by Battle Los Angeles on ESPN. Well, in Oklahoma State right now on my February forecast out in the cold at four and seven. They'll take on Texas A&M tonight in Stillwater. Still have a chance to get on a little roll. They haven't played as well, I think, as Travis Ford had expected this year. They've got a great one coming in with Brian Nash out of Dallas. That one out of bounds and a break in the act to 356 to go in this one. All Jayhawks and Lawrence. Steve Bunin in studio. Time for a live look in. We're going to take you right now to Lincoln, Nebraska, where the Cornhuskers have a two point lead over number two, Texas. We'll get you back to Lords in a bit. But first, 12 seconds left on the clock. There was a foul on a three point attempt by Jacobin Brown. He missed his first free throw attempt. One point game. Now it's a one point game. Come back and meet the ball if you're Nebraska. Run through the pass. Timeout, Doc Sadler. He's still got one left, so both teams now with one left. Yeah. 
Nebraska has dominated for the most part in the paint all day against Texas. Well, it has been a bunch of different ways in the paint with Almeida, with Diaz, dribble penetration by the guards, that case Richardson, but just an outstanding offensive attack for Nebraska this afternoon. Doc Sadler has used bigs to break the pressure here the last several minutes against Texas all-court press. All right, both teams with a timeout of pace. Both teams in the double bonus. Big. Texas has the arrow. But again, Texas was left for dead by many just a couple minutes ago. They were down by 11 points, and Rick Barnes' team trying to get a miracle victory here in Lincoln. Just battling through it. But now, if you're Texas, take the man off the ball, face guard, try and get a five-second count. No five-second count, foul immediately. If you are Nebraska, you got all your best free throw shooters in the game, run through the pass and be strong with the basketball. Four littles, one big for Nebraska, and it's Ubell to be the big, not Diaz. Late sub by Doc Sandler. Richardson, the great foul shooter in the backcourt. Up the floor, and a foul on Texas. Texas wanted to walk on Richardson. Instead, it's 7.9. Mitch, well, that fouls. A, Mitch, that was a pretty good gamble by Rick Barnes. They had a good trap. Thought they had a chance for a steal. Richardson able to get on that sideline and draw the foul. Richardson had just hit two shots, but his miss on the front end of a one-and-one one opened the door for Texas with an onslaught of points to make this possession to possession. from Los Angeles. And Texas uses its final timeout. It's 7.9 seconds. Once again, we'll get you back out to Lawrence, Kansas, but the Jayhawks are blowing out Colorado, and that hasn't been a game since pretty much the tip. So we are now watching Texas for you. Some bonus coverage live looking with number two, Texas, down to seven seconds left. And here's what's at play. Texas obviously could be the number one ranked team in the country, but more importantly maybe is Nebraska trying to creep in this discussion of being on the bubble. They got a soft finish to their season. Kansas State at their place. Missouri at their place. They only have one home loss, that to Nebraska. Everyone else they've held below 70 points. They had this game, and they've nearly gagged it away with, uh, with a terrible press break. But this is one where you hang on. You could see Nebraska right on the bubble come tomorrow morning. And as of right now, Joe Lenardi does not have Nebraska in his next uh, first four out. But a win here would make a huge statement nationally and you one of the best defensive teams in the country Texas has got to get this win they're both great defensive teams actually statistically one two across the board Nebraska and Texas Nebraska plays at a much slower pace than Texas does the difference is Texas beating people by 19 points a game look they've struggled to hit jump shots late in this game they've they've, they've come back in with Jacobin Brown Jordan Hamilton hitting some jump shots now they have Jay Lucas into the game that that's their best jump shooting lineup and of course remember Corey Joseph the freshman point guard is fouled out. Remember, coming up at 4 Eastern, 1 Pacific, North Carolina, tipping off against Boston College here on ESPN. But right now, let's see what happens. Nebraska up to 7.9 on the clock. Huskers at the free throw line. Crazy game in Austin in overtime to the UConn Huskies. This could give Nebraska a three-point lead. If it goes to three, look for Texas to try and get Hamilton open off a screen. You got eight seconds. You got time to do it. Now the question is, did the Nebraska foul to prevent the three? Here comes Jacobin Brown. He's a threat to shoot it. For the tie, no short. Nebraska's got the rebound and the upset victory. The second time in three years, Nebraska has upset the University of Texas, and perfection must wait in the Big 12. Texas stunned here this afternoon by Doc Sadler's Nebraska Cornhuskers. Doc Sadler celebrating the victory. 
So Pittsburgh goes down at St. John's. Texas goes down at Nebraska. What does it mean, Doug Gottlieb? I think Nebraska has now become a bubble team. They can take care of business at home. They're the Cincinnati of this league. No great wins out of league, but no terrible losses either. Big win for the Huskers. They'll be partying in Lincoln. All right, now let's take you back to Lawrence, where the Jayhawks are in biz. So number two, Texas, goes down to defeat. The Cornhuskers at home win at 70 to 67. That is the big story of the day in the nation and in the Big 12. And they shot 47%, something that has not happened very often to Texas this season in the Big 12. And credit Doc Sattler. You've seen them, John. They've been very close on a number of occasions this year. They are now in the NCAA tournament mix. Well, Kansas able to bounce back by the career-high 26 from Marquise Morris, 89-63 the final here in Lawrence. Take a look at the updated Big 12 standings after the Texas loss. Longhorns 11 and 1, Jayhawks 10 and 2, and how about Nebraska at 500? Now 6 and 6. 89-63 the final as Kansas wins it. For Fran for showing our entire crew, I'm John Chami. Coming up next, more college hoops, Boston College in North Carolina. This has been an exclusive presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Now we go to Chapel Hill and Mike Patrick.